Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Paula's Kitchen. This is episode five, and it seems like we're going in a little bit of a pattern. We're doing a meal, and then we're doing a sweet, so it's time for a dinner. I've got a stovetop dinner for you today. We're going Italian. I am going to take Betty Crocker's chicken cacciatore recipe, and I'm going to update it a little bit by using fresh grape tomatoes in it. It is so delicious and fresh. It makes a great Sunday dinner when you put it over pasta. Uh, your ingredient wise, let's take a look. There's not a lot. Typically you'd make cacciatore with chicken on the bone, but we are gonna do it with a boneless chicken breast. And then we're gonna use these lovely fresh organic tomatoes. I've got a red pepper. I've got sweet onion, some garlic, some plain tomato sauce. We're gonna flavor it with oregano and we're gonna simmer that for a while, blend the flavors. You are going to love it. So let's get started. All right, guys, before we get started, check out the apron. In another life, back when our son was in college, he worked for Chiquita headquarters, the banana people, and scored me this awesome apron. I know it's not Italian, but I love it. All right, guys. The recipe in the original cookbook calls for green pepper, but I absolutely love a red pepper in this recipe. It just has a sweetness that I just love. It calls for about a half a cup. I cut them in strips because when I take a bite of a red pepper, I want to enjoy it. So basically, whatever fits in here, it's going to be a little more than a half a cup, but that's okay because we both love red pepper. All right. Forgive my mess. Alrighty, now it calls for some onion cut in rings or partial rings. So I've got a sweet onion here that I'm just cutting in half rings. And those are going to cook down in our sauce and be delicious. Alrighty, toss those in my cup here. Now, my new ingredient or surprise ingredient is the tomatoes. And what I'm gonna do with those is just simply slice them in half long ways. And I'm actually counting them because I, I do about eight or 10 per person. <laughs> I am very tempted to just pop one in my mouth, believe me, because I absolutely love these things. <laughs> I really do. So this is gonna end up being eh, roughly about a cup of these. If you have cherry tomatoes, you can use those as well. Or if you have garden tomatoes, you could just cut them into smaller pieces. All right, a couple more. All right, that is it. And then my last prep is the garlic. You guys have probably watched me do this before on the garlic. It's just kind of a rough mince because this is going to cook down in the sauce as well. It calls for two cloves. Some people, and I've seen them on cooking shows, they have this smashing technique on the garlic. If you know how to smash them with, a, with one of those big knives, go to town and do it. Get your frustrations out as well as smashing up your garlic. All right, I'm happy with that. Let me go get my chicken and we're gonna prep that. All right, guys, before we go on, let me just say, I'm gonna put the ingredient list and all the instructions in the description box below so you don't have to write anything down. You can just copy it, paste it, and save yourself a copy if you wanna make this. We do this with all the recipes, just FYI. All right, so my boneless chicken that I have, it doesn't look like it's super young, let me be honest. So I am going to cut it into sort of like a bite-sized strip, I guess we'll say. Um, I like that, especially when I'm thinking that the chicken might be a little on the tough side, and I'm gonna cut it against the grain so that we get maximum tenderness out of these little strips. They're not exactly chicken tenders, but let's say chicken chunks. <laughs> And this is still just the tiniest bit partially frozen, which does help when you're cutting things into pieces like this. 
And what we are going to do with it is we are going to flour it and fry it up, brown it up, before we start the whole cacciatore recipe. So the way I do that is the plastic bag, which is one of the cook's best friends. Throw in the flour in the plastic bag and the chicken. We'll do that in a sec. Like I said, plastic bag, this is a gallon bag, about a half a cup of just regular all-purpose flour. And what I'm going to do is toss some of the pieces of chicken in here and shake it around. All right, folks, so let me shake my first batch. And sometimes you have to help those out a little bit to get the idea. Let me get my pan going. Medium high heat to get things started. And a nice dollop of olive oil. Can't do Italian cooking without olive oil. And since I have a lot of chicken to cook, I'll liberally coat that pan. All right, now I'm gonna scoop out some chicken and start dropping it in. We're gonna end up with bite-sized pieces of chicken, which are just gonna go great with our little tomato and red pepper and onion pieces. We're going to put it over top of some shell macaroni, and it's going to be awesome. All right, throw some more of these guys in. Toss and toss and toss. <laughs> it's a messy proposition, you guys, especially when your hands are slippery from handling wet chicken. pan is getting full, but we'll make room not to worry. Alrighty, clean up time. Be back in a sec. Been a couple minutes, I cleaned up, and we are gonna take a look and see if any of these are ready to be turned yet, and not quite. They're starting to get going. They're sizzling nice. We'll check back in a couple minutes. Sizzling here, it's looking good. Let me start turning these babies. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, little chicken nuggets here. Is that the first time we heard our cameraman speak today? <laughs> Guys, he's always there, working away, smelling the food. I'm hungry. Yes. We film these Wednesday videos on Sunday afternoon, so these become our Sunday dinner. And uh, it ends up being kind of special by the time we sit down to eat, because I feel like we both, we both earned it, you know? <laughs> We're working for our supper, for sure. On these. I just noticed something. What is that? You have Chiquita bananas behind you as well as a Chiquita apron. You know, not only that, but there is a plethora of stickers on the Chiquita bananas. Like, it's I, overkill. That's what I said. It's, <laughs> it's definitely Chiquita banana time here. Uh, we went to Sprouts last night. <laughs> I needed the pepper and the onion and the uh, tomatoes for the dinner tonight, so we had to stop. All right, everything is turned. And the second side, you guys, always cooks quicker than the first. So this will be ready to be taken out of the pan shortly. All righty, guys, these are done on the back side as well. So I'm going to pull them out and just drop them into a bowl. And honestly, the spatula probably will do the job best. So that I can pick up some of that flour as well. And never fear, everything, all this goodness in the bottom of the pan is going to get picked up when we do the veggies and the sauce and all this good flavor 
We'll just continue to make this a delicious dish. All right, I actually need two hands for the last couple. All righty. Now, while that's sizzling away, let's get our veggies in. The onion, the pepper, and the garlic. All right. Get those stirring, coated with the olive oil in the pan. And these have to cook for, eh, I don't know, between five and 10 minutes till we start to see them cook down a little bit. And I am thinking I need a little bit of olive oil in my pan. Let me just drizzle a little bit more. There. All right. We'll be back with you in just a little bit. Let me cook these down a little bit. Okay, folks, this is cooked down. They are starting to look translucent and look at all this dark goodness on the bottom of the pan. Now I'm going to pour in just a 15 ounce can of regular tomato sauce. Grab myself a wooden spoon here. And then I'm going to flavor that with just two items. I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt, which I happen to have handy right here, and a quarter teaspoon of oregano. What Italian does not love oregano? Alrighty folks, now we are just going to stir that for a minute and then we're going to put the chicken back in and simmer all this goodness for about a half an hour. And I haven't put my piece de resistance in there yet, which is my tomatoes. Put in the chicken. Oh, that smells good. And my fresh tomatoes. All right, let me stir all this goodness together. And this definitely requires a nice tight lid on your pot because you do not want anything to evaporate out of this. So on my clock, about quarter till five. So this will be ready. Oh, I'm gonna have to go grab my lid, um, but this will be ready in about half an hour and I'm gonna start some pasta in the meantime. All right, so my cacciatore is simmering away. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get started on the pasta because for al dente, it takes 10 or 11 minutes. So I just started some water on the stove here and I just tossed a little bit of salt in there. Typically for the two of us, a cereal bowl of dry pasta feeds us for dinner, even with a little bit of leftover. So we're gonna get this boiling. Let's take a look and give it a stir. Oh boy. Big old bunch of steam comes up, and this is where the red pepper really starts to hit your nose as you stir this up. The pepper and the sweet onion and those lovely tomatoes. Oh my gosh, we still have 15 minutes yet. I'm hungry. Me too. <laughs> Pasta water is boiling. Let's get these. I got some big old shells. Let's get those in the water. They should be done just at the same time the chicken cacciatore is done. All right, folks, I just tasted one of these and it is al dente, so let me go over to the sink and I'm going to drain them. Let's take a look. It's quarter after, or at least close enough for me. <laughs> oh. That is ready to serve. Look at what that sauce did. And of course the flour on the chicken acts as a natural thickener, so it just thickened up. Oh, you guys would not, we need the smell of vision You would not believe how great this smells. I'm gonna grab the plates, we're gonna serve this. That looks fantastic. I'll tell you what we were gonna do, we were gonna go outside, but as you can see, 
We're having like a gale storm out there or something. <laughs> it's hot and windy, so we decided we better stay in here in the AC. <laughs> yeah. So, Paula, you outdid yourself on this one, did you not? You haven't tasted it. Why don't you hand me the camera and let's have you try it. All right, hold on. All right, guys, this is my erstwhile cameraman, hungry fellow. Let's see what he thinks of the food. First of all, it smells unbelievable. Yes, and it looks pretty. Oh. Serve it with a salad, you're all set. That is so good. That is so good. When she made this last week, I, I just raved about it. I, I the, the fresh tomatoes in here and the, and the uh, tomato sauce and these, uh, what do you call these shells? Just shell macaroni. Just shell yeah, macaroni. nothing, nothing fancy. No, yeah. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take one more. No, don't watch. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's a wrap on episode five of Paula's Kitchen. I haven't tasted it yet. It's driving me crazy. We really thank you for being with us for these cooking episodes. Or it's a new kind of adventure for us, but we're having a lot of fun. And we hope you are as well. Time for dinner. We'll see you guys later. Hope you had a good time, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this new episode of Paula's Kitchen. Did you know that we do a video every Sunday as well, right here on this very same channel? It's not about cooking. It's all about all kinds of adventures all around the Las Vegas Valley. So why don't you check us out? And we'll see you this Sunday. Bye-bye, everybody.